Hello and welcome to another instructional video brought to you by Zappysys. In this video we're going to cover how to use a custom ODBC JDBC bridge driver. This is especially useful for when you want to consume JDBC driver data into non-Java apps. Things like Excel, Power BI, Informatica, or maybe you have some other app where you want to consume data or expose data from it but don't have native JDBC driver support. If you've seen any other Zappysys tutorials like this one, you may have noticed that most of the time I start off on a web page for that specific component on the Zappysys website, just like the one you see here. And I only want to point that out because this particular component has some prerequisites that must be installed before you use it. And so you'll definitely want to check out this help file link and go through those step-by-step -step, uh, instructions if you need some help with those prerequisites. And I'll walk you through how to do that. Okay, so as always, the first thing you want to do to use this custom component is download the Zappysys ODBC Power Pack. And you can get that from the website by hovering over Products, ODBC Power Pack, and download the free trial. And I'll be sure to put a link for that one in the description below. In addition to installing the ODBC Power Pack, you'll also need to have Java installed on your machine. So if you do, that's great. If you don't, no worries. We're going to check out this help file link right here on how do we get that. The bare minimum you'll need is Java Runtime. And the best place I'm aware of to get the best free version is this link right here on Amazon. And we recommend version 8. That's the one that I have installed on this machine I'm using. So I'm going to click this link. And now you can scroll down in this list to find your specific version that you need. So 64-bit Windows version 8 JRE MSI. You can use this link right here. Now let's say you have another use case and you want to use the older Oracle Java and you already have an Oracle Java license. That's totally fine. We'll hop back over to this help file and you can use this other link right here that says download JRE8. It'll take you to this page. Make sure you're on the tab for Java 8. Scroll down to the JRE section. Expand it. Go to Windows, and here's your 64-bit JRE installer. So those are the steps to get the free JDK or JRE or the Oracle JRE for your Windows machine. Once you have everything installed, I'm going to just search for the Gateway Configuration Tool. And I'm going to allow it to make changes, and up pops the Configuration Tool. The first thing you'll want to do is hop over to the Users tab. And if you don't have any users created already, just add a login, make sure the password's the same, and you're going to need at least one administrator. I already have those two users, so I'm going to stick with those. And also be sure to go to the Network Settings tab and add a firewall rule so that other machines from the local network can reach the gateway on port 5000. There we go. Other than that, we'll just hop back over to the Data Sources tab and make a new data source. So I'm going to click Add. I'm going to give it a name, and I'm going to use the Zappysys uh, JDBC bridge driver, so I'm going to click that one. Now, when you're configuring this driver, you'll definitely want to refer to your JDBC driver documentation, because there are many out there. Just as an example, I was searching on GitHub earlier, and just for the term JDBC, you get tens of thousands of response. So just pay attention to your specific JDBC driver documentation, and that's going to help you enter all the information you need for this driver. So for this demo, I'm using a Postgres SQL JDBC example, and I already have my connection string over here that I'm just going to copy and paste in there. You'll notice this is vendor specific, so it has my host name, it has my port number, it has my database name, You'll need all those components. The driver class field is optional, but if you know it, I would recommend putting it in there. It might avoid some errors later on. The JDBC driver path is where you specify the file path for the actual driver that you're using, and it usually ends with the .jr. So I'm going to paste that in, and then the username and password for your JDBC driver. Paste those in as well. So that's really it. I mean, once you've entered those things and everything is 
correct or you want to make sure that it's correct, you can click this test connection button and this will also make sure that, hey, it works. And that also validated that we do have Java installed. So just know that before you try to test the connection. You probably noticed that we just only entered a few uh, values, but there are lots of other sections for things like error handling and log settings, just to give you an idea of how flexible and useful this custom driver is. So now let's check out the preview tab. This is where we can use the SQL editor here to get the data that this ODBC connection will return. You can enter any SQL into this editor that the JDBC driver accepts. And you'll likely want to select from an existing table using this drop down menu here. So as an example, I'll pick the customer data table. And we can see that SQL is already generated for this table that contains all of the columns. So if I click the preview data button, we'll see that data is returned in the pane below from that table. And also whenever we use the preview data button, the metadata is automatically generated for us too, which is we can see right here. So when you're finished with the SQL editor and you're ready to start using this ODBC DSN, you can just click the OK button. And there we have it. That's how easy it is to use the custom Zappy Sys ODBC JDBC bridge driver. Okay, so we've already covered how to create a gateway connection. We've created a user account for the gateway. We've made sure the firewall settings are configured properly, and we've connected to an API data source. Now let's see how we can use the data from this gateway as a linked server in SQL Server. So as you can see, I have an instance of SQL Server open already. I'm just going to create a new linked server, and I'm gonna do it first the manual way so you can see this, and then I'm gonna show you the super easy way to do it. So let's give it a name. I'm going to call it the manual way. And we're going to use SQL Server 11. Our data source is localhost on port 5000. And the catalog has to be the exact name of the gateway. We used CS gateway. Last, I'm going to go to the security. And I'm going to make sure it uses our gateway user. And there we go. You see our linked server over here. So that was the manual way, and that was a lot of typing. I'm gonna open up uh, a new query editor, and now I'm gonna go back to the gateway configuration tool. I'm gonna go to the app integration tab, and now I'm gonna get a script to do all of this for me. So I'm gonna call it gateway going to make it use our gateway that we made. And I'm going to generate the code. So one thing we have to do down here, specify our user. And now let's just copy this code into SQL Studio. So I'm going to run this script to make us our automated gateway. So I'm going to refresh it. And there we have the one we just made. So now what can we do? We can query from, let's keep using the customers table. And there's our data. You know, we could even do something like, let's copy that. And let's make a view. We'll just call it VW Gateway. Huh. Let's make sure we 
do as. There we go. Not VSVW. And there's our data again. So that's a live view as a view from that API source. That's how easy it is to retrieve data from the API using a gateway service and then making that as a linked server in SQL Server. I know that sounds super complicated, but hopefully you get the idea of how flexible it is and how easy it is to get that data real time in SQL Server from an API. If you want to give it a try, but you haven't already downloaded the ODBC Power Pack yet, go ahead and do that now. And don't forget, the link is in the description below. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the ZappySys YouTube channel to get more tips and tricks like this and other updates in the future.